now. All right, I'd like to welcome the folks from Pazer with us today. Uh, we have Doug Little joining us, who's the president and co-founder. We have uh, Kent Lloyd, who's the director of business development. And then we also have Peyton Chilton joining us, who's the business, business development representative. So we have plenty of people to answer any questions. If anything comes up at any point in time, just type it in that little question chat box and I'll find a, a nice place to interrupt Doug and ask the question. And with that, I will turn it over to Doug. Great, thanks a lot, appreciate it, Ryan. So um, nice to meet you all this morning, uh, however virtually, but we're gonna explore this topic today, a little bit how technology can help grow your business. Um, and we're gonna share during the presentation, I'm gonna have some slides to go through to sort of give you sort of the background on, on why technology and how it can help you. Um, and then Kent's gonna share a couple of links to some calculators that we have. Those, those calculators are also live on our website underneath our sort of blog section, um, but we're just gonna put those in here this morning. So through those use of those calculators, I'll put examples in the presentation here and walk through it, but you'll be able to put your own numbers in for your own business and see the impact that it would have for you if you were to implement some of the things that we're gonna be discussing today. So um, I'll get right into it now. If I can just move my slide. There we go, just a slight delay there on the WebEx, sorry about that. So who we are, um, if some of you are using Pazer, thank you uh, for, for working with us over the years, but if you're new to us, um, who are we? We're a, a software company, we're based in Charlotte, North Carolina. We've been around now for over 10 years. Um, I've got a family history in contracting, it's like three, four generations back, folks have been in, in the construction industry. Um, and I went to sort of, you know, the software side of things to help drive efficiency as the adoption of technology enters into our business, which is the topic today. But we've been creating these easy to manage tech solutions for contractors and, you know, taking a pride in our customer support. We're based in Charlotte. We have live human beings here. When you need to talk to us, you can. Um, we've got chat, we've got email, we've got phone services, all those things to help you through this process but we're really trying to build the software um, with process that makes it streamlined for your business. My hope is that you can pick up our software and not actually need to call us for every little thing because the software sort of works through and it's what's called intuitive. It makes it easy for you to use. So just a little background on us and the reason why I wanna say at the bottom here, we've got 8,000 active contractors using our software, more than 20,000 folks logged in on a daily basis. And I'm not saying that to brag, I wanna just, offer you that opportunity to understand. We talk to a lot of folks, we have a lot of folks using the software and we elicit a lot of feedback. And that's sort of what we put into our software so that we can have an understanding of your business processes and the practices you have to go through on a daily basis to get your work done. So what is PaysAware? It's a business management software. It's got integrated processes and an easy workflow. I'm trying to make it intuitive, as I said, simple, easy for you to adopt as well. We have technicians that sort of download the app and just like any other app you have, you can kind of figure it out on your own. Maybe you got a question or two, because it is, you know, you're not, a, not just a social app, it's a business app, but it's kind of easy to sort of pick up and use. It's cloud-based, so what happens in the field, the back office can see, and if the back office needs to push something to the field, they can see it in real time. And then all of that work, that entire workflow, automatically flows into the reporting on the back end of the system so that owners can drive their business decisions using real live data. You can see what's going on in your business at this moment, change some date ranges, see how did we do last week, this past month, this past quarter, this past year, at any time you can see how you're doing in your business. So we're trying to streamline some things. And that's kind of gets into our topic here. So how do we get to this point? Why are we building software? We're trying to introduce technology into this, into our marketplace to, to really help you guys get efficient, right? So we're gonna start exploring this influence of technology first with how is it in your life and then also in your business? And this chart here shows the acceleration of technology over the years. So if you look way back to the left-hand side of the screen here, the printing press, right? Some people look at me and say, that's a piece of wood, Doug. Was, it, was that technology? Yeah, it was, right? It gave people the ability to now in mass print booklets, pamphlets, newspapers, all those types of things. And what did that do? It unlocked communication, right? That's essentially what these 
cell phones and tablets and computers have done for us now in the modern age is just even just widening and widening the communication bandwidth of which we can communicate efficiently, right? But it took a long time. You see that slow growth of technology. We got to the telescope, then the steam engine in the 1750s, then along came the telegraph, right? Then the telephone in the 1850s. Cars started coming out a little bit towards the turn of the century, right? We were moving from horse-drawn carriages to, um, to automobiles, right? And that took a long time to adopt. And then in the 1960s, 1969, you know, we landed on the moon. And I always make the joke that we got to the dark side of the moon and we met the aliens there. And then look what happened to the technology, right? It's just been accelerating at such a rapid rate. I joke now, too, man on the moon in 1969. Now, you know, we all remember William Shatner from, you know, from, um, uh, you know, Captain Kirk. He's actually now really flying in space, you know, not just in the movies. So technology, the point with this chart is it's advancing at such a rapid rate and it's not slowing down. It's merely accelerating and accelerating, getting faster and faster. So we have to be looking for ways to adopt to this technology in our business. And that's sort of what we've set out to do. But why do you need technology in your business, right? What's, what for, what does it do? Well, like other industries have adopted technology across our great country, um, you're doing it to, you know, because of real reasons. Well, there's labor, right? There's workforce and ultimately that leads to productivity is what you're looking for, right? So this chart I wanna share with you, this is the, you know, some federal charts. I've got the next couple of slides here. If you look at unemployment, we're at the low end of the range from the 1950s all the way across. It's been up and down, but it's kind of at acceptable levels. You can see the spike from COVID there, but we're back down to acceptable levels. So unemployment's not so bad, right? You know, you think you think there's got to be, you know, employees, everyone's getting to work and stuff, but what's happening is the labor force participation, it's been dropping for the last two decades. If you look at this chart and go across it, Go across 1950s, 65, it starts to accelerate into the 2000s. And then since the 2000s, just a, just a rapid decline in the workforce participation that you see there, right? This next chart is really telling for our industry. This is labor force participation by men, and it's been declining basically forever. I mean, that, look back on the left-hand side of the chart, that's the 1950s. Do you think in 1980, guys were saying, boy, I just can't get good help? It's even worse now. It's only gotten worse. And why is this important? If you look at the box in the middle of the screen here, HVAC technicians, right? 91.4% of them are men. So it's very hard to find these folks. And the average age is 42. So where are the young guys, right? Where is the, where is the population? So when you're met with this, these prevailing trends, you start to say, hmm, what, what, what's going on here? What, how do I combat this, right? And then this chart here, is the general public's technology adoption. Now, I, I tried to find an updated chart for the presentation. They haven't republished this. I was all over Google, so I apologize. It only goes out to 2016, so it's merely accelerated since then through COVID, I'm sure. But you can see all of these trends going up and to the right, accelerating, right? This is the evolution of technology adoption and usage. I mean, many of us on the phone probably remember when you didn't want to put your credit card into a website because they'll steal all your all your money and your information, right? And now probably many of us on the call have our Amazon account set to just buy now where we hit a button and we make the purchase, right? So the public is just adopting technology at such a rapid rate. They're going to force us to adopt technology in our business in order to interact with them, right? So some prevailing trends, these high impacts, right? At a high level, the labor supply is tight. It basically has been for years. And in a tight labor market, your employee time is at a premium. You have to get as much out of each of your employees as you can. How many customers can we see per day, right? How, what's our, how much can we sell on that, on any, every single job? You know, how can we maximize our efforts there, right? So this technology can help you make good use of that time. Tablets and other things, these can enable your, enable your workforce, you know, your field workforce, so let them flourish. I mean, I used to get a lot of questions Doug, you know, five years ago, should I get my guys tablets? We don't get that question anymore. Why? Verizon and AT&T have made it very easy to get those tablets and things. They've, the prices come way down. But everyone's expecting to just have that functionality now. Homeowners are expecting you to show them a tablet, you know, not a paper invoice and things. So they're demanding it, right? They want interactive proposals that they, you can, can you just email me that? My wife and I'll take a look at it. 
and they don't want a static screen. They want to be able to mess around with it and uh, select some recommendations and apply for financing, right? All those types of things. They're just demanding that interaction because that's what they're getting every place else in their buying experience throughout their life, right? Everything's interactive now, so they're demanding it. And this field use of technology really takes the redundancy out of the back office, right? If you're using an FSM, and I apologize, I can only speak of Pazerware, right? But um, what it does, our system, and hopefully others, if you're using others, should be doing this, there should be no data entry by your back office folks. What happens in the field should automatically go into the system, sync down to QuickBooks if you're using QuickBooks, make it very easy for you and very efficient for your back office to then manage what's going on, not doing data entry work, right? And they can drive more efficiency. They can recognize issues, problems, solve those problems and keep your customers happy, right? So really what I'm trying to put forth here is that Technology is your answer to combat all these prevailing trends as you're trying to grow your business and, and, and in this tight, fucking tight environment, you know? So what I want to do is dive into your industry just a little bit here with two sort of concepts to look at, right? The physical world and the digital world. Now, this is put forth in a couple of different theories. It's bits and atoms. Some very smart, you know, think tank people have come up with this, but I've tried to just kind of simplify it for us to apply it to our marketplace and, and for your for your business to make it easy for you to then go back and talk within your business and explain these things to other folks that are working for you. So the physical world, that's what do you have to put your hands on to accomplish, right? What do we got to turn a wrench on and, and actually really do, drive or whatever it might be, right? The physical world can only uh, interact with that. And then the digital world, considering what can software or a computer do for you, right? So if we're looking at your physical, your business, let's look at your business, right? And let's sort of, we, we normally if we're in a classroom, we'd sort of have a play along here, but I'll sort of voice over what I've heard across, you know, all the different presentations I've done face-to-face -face back when we could, right? So installing ductwork, pretty much a physical exercise, right? Installing a new blower motor, completely physical. Driving the van to the customer's house, yes, physical, right? Scheduling and dispatching. Are you using phone calls to tell you guys where to go, right? Are your guys calling back in? Hey, I just finished this job. Where am I going? Are they coming to the office in the morning and you're handing them the, the schedule for the day, right? On a piece of paper and they got to punch it into their GPS and drive around and do all those things, you know, or how are you tracking your guys? Are they calling in telling you when they're done with the job, right? Invoicing, is it come back to the office with a piece of paper? We type that up in QuickBooks, maybe print an invoice and mail it to a homeowner, right? Then the homeowner gets it, they have to open it, write a check, send it back to you, right? So a little bit of the physical world there. And of course, with payments and proposals, financing, are you doing paper applications, right? And then how are you generating your leads and other types of things too, right? So if we look at that, right, we walk through that. Now let's change the lens and let's say digital, right? What parts of these could be digital? Installing ductwork, I don't think there's a robot for that yet, right? <laughs> Installing a new blower motor, of course not yet, right? Driving the van to the customer's house, hmm, Elon Musk might have a thing to say about that, right? There's all types of new technology coming out. Think about how that has actually even improved with technology. Think of your GPS, right? We used to have to have a map out, a piece of paper, and where am I going, right? And talk to a guy who says, turn at the big tree, right? Now that's all been influenced. We've all adopted, you know, just give me the address. I'll plug it in my phone. I'll see you there, right? It even tells me how long it's going to take me to get there, adjust for traffic patterns, all those things. So digital world has already, already influenced us there. Scheduling and dispatching. What if you could have a dynamic schedule that where updates are sent to your team in, in the field in real time? Say we got a new call. You happen to be close because I can track. I can see where you are. You're close to this job. So I'm going to I'm going to have Bill go to your three o'clock. I'm going to send you over here at 2.30 because you're closer, right? You can ship things like that. So technology digital can help in all those things. Invoicing. What if you could create an invoice right there? I know when I have folks work at my house, I expect to kind of pay them when they're done. Not, you know, hey, send me an invoice and then I got to worry about paying them later, right? So what if you could invoice them right there at the, at the time the work is complete on your tablet, let them e-sign for it and then take that payment and other things. The proposal, like I spoke of before, right? Having dynamic proposals, interactive things. So you can see how the digital world is starting to influence what we've already done in physical, but it has even more power to help us get more and more efficient as we grow this out throughout our business, right? And again, why worry about it? 
Well, the trend is not slowing down. It's actually accelerating and accelerating. If this, if this chart, if we had a couple more years to pump into this chart, you'd see that line get steeper and steeper and steeper. I think if you look past the 3D movies and the first 3D chip and start thinking about what's going on today in technology with you know, electric cars and the Ford F-150 now has an electric version. I mean, who would ever thought those things would come to pass, but it's just been accelerating and accelerating. It's not gonna stop, right? So why now? What's changed in our industry to make this the why now moment, right? Because software has been around for 15 years, right? You guys have all heard, oh, the promises, technology, this, and Excelsior's probably had many, many presentations with you over the years to sort of introduce new technology. But what changed? Why now is it finally coming true? Well, it's the 5G networks. Our friends at Verizon, T-Mobile, AT&T, they've all built this super high speed, reliable network now that we as HVAC contractors and such can run our business on these mobile networks and we don't lose connectivity, right? We can track our guys, we can send communication to our guys and they can't tell you, well, I didn't get it, you know? It just, it all works now. So what these cloud-based FSMs like myself and Pazerware, right? We're driving efficiency now across this network. So it's, it's finally here. That's what I wanted to tell you guys this morning. It works. You can really start to adopt technology and advance your business at a rapid pace. Think about your company. If you put it on, on the chain, on this growth chart yourself, what could you do? If you think about your business over the years, it's been a slow sort of growth, right? Now introduce the technology into it and you can also have rapid growth to ride that trend right right with you, okay? So I'm gonna dig in now to your business in a couple of different ways. I've got some, um, some, uh, some topics here and Kent's gonna share some of these calculators as we go through them in the system. And I might need Ryan to help me out as I move through them, but let's cover our first topic, just get to more jobs. And when I say that, you guys are like, yeah, obvious, Doug, of course, right? But what if my guys are already full? What can I do? Well, some specifics, right? Have a clear electronic schedule dispatch board connected to your CRM so your, so your schedulers can see customer information at their fingertips. What if you made your, what if you made your call center more efficient? They get, they get through calls faster. They could take more calls in a day. They could dispatch those calls to your folks by optimizing those routes like I spoke of, right? See who's nearby, get him over there, capture that sale, right? Send autom automated notifications to your field guys. Don't have to call them, tell them, hey, there's been a change. Just let it come through the app, ping, whoop, my schedule's adjusted, okay, I'll go over there. And they'll appreciate it because you know what you did? You kept them from having to drive across town. You got a job you know, a mile away. Boom, he drives over there, he's happy, right? So these things start to happen. And if you have the right information, the history there, what, what did we do last time on this job? Well, it's in the app, right? You don't have to call back in, pull out old invoices, read it off to the tech. It's already there. So the, all these things is just drive some super duper efficiency in for your business. Now, let me just come out of uh, present mode here. Okay. And then let me stare over at Kent's screen to make sure this came through. There we go. Okay, cool. So Kent's gonna share this, uh, the link to this calculator in the chat. But this is the power of one more job per day, right? And I got the idea to put this calculator together when I had a conversation with an HVAC contractor one day. He'd been using um, Pazerware for about, well, let's see, he's in his fourth year now. So I think it was like, I don't know, really, it was almost year one, the first summer. And I said, Jim, how's it going? He said, Doug's going great. And I said, okay, Jim, give me some color. What do you mean by great? And he goes, well, everyone's getting at least one more job. And I'm like, yes, it works. Tell me about that, Jim, right? So we started having a conversation and I put it into a calculator so you could see sort of this is sort of a cost justification for Pacerware, but the impact of one more job per day for technicians. So again, put your own numbers in. These are adjustable. You can mess with these things a little bit if you'd like, right? But I just said, you know, I've got five field folks out in the field, you know, maybe let's just adjust it down to four, right? And what's your average revenue per job? We see the average ticket through Pazerware is 850 bucks. So that's taking into account small service work and large system installs, right? So just put a number in there. What is your average ticket, right? And then what's your profit per job? So I just put a hundred bucks in there, right? And how many office users are you gonna have? You have one or two, right? That's just for the cost justification thing for Pazerware. And then we've got flat rate pricing in there as well from our partner, Profit Rhino. That's your Pazerware license, right? 
But really what I'm trying to drive in this topic is if you take these four technicians and get them to one additional job per day based upon your average ticket and your average net profit, right? This is what you're gonna have. $71,000 in additional monthly revenue and $8,400 in additional monthly profit, right? Now you say to me, Doug, that's crazy. I don't believe you. There's no way software can go work that well. Well, what if I could get each job, each guy to just one more job per week, right? And then even one more per month, small impact there, but you can definitely get into one. And the norm is we see at least one more job per day per technician. And how is that happening? The efficiency of the system is driving that, right? They get to do more on each job and they slice off 15 minutes, say. So if I'm a technician that normally gets to four jobs per day and you take 15 minutes off of each job, well, that leaves me an extra hour for me to do another job, right? So you can handle leads, you can increase your marketing, you can do these things because you'll have confidence that you can get to these jobs to service the customers that are asking you to do some work for them, okay? So I'm just gonna flip down here, right? Let me just bring this one up. Now we wanna get more out of our current jobs, right? So the concept here is to just sort of think about how can we have, what closing tools can we have to get more from each job? So I wanna make the pitch for the good, better, best. You've all heard this probably a million times and you're like, Doug, I've heard that. It's hard to implement. We've got software, again, technology can make it easy for you. If you build at the bottom here, build proposals with off templates, save those, let your folks offer the same thing over and over again, right? Integrate the cost of financing into your price book so that your folks just have basically a price and a monthly payment. You're offering affordability when you're offering financing to your homeowners, right? And with the new changes coming in 2023, all the new efficiency changes, well, the price of our equipment is just gonna get even more expensive. So it's even more important for us to start offering affordability to homeowners so that they can afford to buy these products and install them in their homes, right? Now, when you offer the good, better, best, all I'm saying there, the concept I'm presenting there is give homeowners options, right? Take your team from having to sell a system to a homeowner to where the homeowner buys a system from the selections you have offered them from you, right? Everybody can be a good salesman if customers are coming in to buy, right? It's when you gotta go sell somebody and convince them it's hard and people don't like doing that. Our folks, our employees don't like doing that and the customers don't like being sold to. Homeowners, they like picking out options. They like buying, right? So allow them the op opportunity to buy from you through the system there, okay? So that brings us to our next calculator, right? And Kent will share again in the, uh, chat box there but this is sort of the impact of financing is the title of my calculator but you're going to see the concept of presenting options to homeowners okay so say you went on a hundred replacement bids per year okay and just your average cash price i've heard it across the country a long time it's seven seventy five hundred bucks everyone tells me that's about what it costs right and what's your average margin on replacement jobs Take this and slide it left, right, whatever you want to do. So I'll just say 20% here, right? And then what's your current close rate? Put it in. Again, sharing the, sharing the calculator so you can put your own numbers in here and see the impact of it, right? So when you do this, you say you got an a average margin of 20% on your replacement jobs. You're going to close 30% of them. Based on your average ticket and the number of bids, this would be your total estimated sales, okay? Now, when offering options to homeowners, and again, presenting affordability by using financing, your average ticket, this is just statistical across the industry, you guys can Google this, right? It's why the, or why the banks all give us credit cards, we buy more, right? The average ticket goes up 30%, so that puts you at $9,800 here on your average ticket. And then how often are you likely to offer financing? Just put that in there. And that will adjust your close rate. Your close rate goes up, and you can see the impact now to your business here. So again, concepts here, offering options to homeowners, letting them buy, use technology to make that buying experience current like they find in everything else that they're doing in their lives, right, when it comes to buying things, okay? So back to our presentation here.
And I apologize for switching back and forth, but I want to show you those live calculators as we walk through them. Okay. So this concept here, creating future revenue, right? Generating recurring and future revenue with maintenance plans. Okay. Sell maintenance plans on every single job. How do you do that? Well, if you implement technology, you can click a box in our system that shows every single customer that your folks interact with who is not already a maintenance plan customer, it shows them your maintenance plan. And you can click another button and offer them a discount on today's repair to sign up for your maintenance plan and then get preferential treatment, all those other things that come with it. So if there's ever a problem in the future, boom, right? Now you track the equipment when they sign up for it. So if they have existing equipment, input it into the system and track it. How old is it? Well, it's eight years old now. It's time to start the marketing engine to that customer, right? So now you can stay top of mind when it's time to replace. You go out there and you say, Doug, we're servicing your system. It's the fourth time we've been out here for a repair. Your system's 12 years old. You know, it's time that we could be replacing this thing. I got some options here for as little as 139 bucks a month. I put you in a new system. You get some energy savings. You run it off your phone, yada, yada, yada. Boy, that sounds great. <laughs> it's an easy sale there for me to sell myself. But you just get it, get it through and use that technology, right? Because maintenance plans really are the future to your business. And this brings us to our third and final calculator here for the conversation. Um, let me bring this one up. So again, Ken's gonna be sharing these over in the chat for you. So this is the surprising power of maintenance plans. It's a compounding effect, right? So this calculator, again, starts with the number of field people, put that in there, right? Whatever your number is. How many calls per day per person, right? So 4.5, three, whatever it might be your average. And what are you gonna sell your maintenance plan for? I put 300 bucks in here. You can change it to 250, whatever you'd like. And then consider this here. Maintenance plan offer rate. What percentage of the time do you expect your people to offer it, right? Now, if you're not implementing my system, I can't speak for your, your practices are, so put your number in there. But again, like I said, with Pazerware, click a button and I could slide that to 100%, right? But I'll leave it at 50 for our conversation here because say you got five guys and two and a half of them are really good at presenting the maintenance plans, okay? Then what's the acceptance rate? 30% of the time, homeowner is going to say, okay, sure, I'll take it, right? You can adjust these if you want there as well, right? Now, we got to make some assumptions, right, about the future value of these contracts. Now, this comes from my years of experience. I've been in the HVAC industry specifically for 15 years, but I've been in this sort of technology construction space for a long time. And I've talked to all the coaches, all those folks out there that you guys may have bumped into over the years. And I've asked them sort of, what are some industry averages, right? And then also seeing the data from those 8,000 contractors using our system, I'm able to triangulate a little bit on what are the averages, right? So the annual contract retention rate for maintenance customers, it's 85% when you bill them monthly. If you don't bill them monthly, it drops drastically, right? I've done a lot of presentations for folks when they tell me, you know, once they bill monthly, they start to smile because the retention rate stays up because you just bill them monthly and there's never the activity of, oh, it's time to renew, it's just so auto renews, right? And it just keeps billing them 19 bucks a month, whatever it might be. Then what are the percentage of contract customers needing a new system each year? Well, the industry average is 10% of the people that have maintenance plans with you, 10% of them, their systems will break down each year and need replacement. Your win rate on those sales is 85%, why? Well, you've gotten to know me for seven years. You know my kids, you know my two dogs' names, all these great things, right? You've talked to me about efficiency and this poor old system that this builder put in for you, Doug. We gotta upgrade you, right? You got a great close rate on that. You don't have to be a super duper salesman. And then I still kept that you know, revenue per system. I kept it at 7,500 bucks, but you could adjust it there for yourself. And then in year one, your, your five guys, right? They go out there and they start selling maintenance plans, right? And then you sell 844 maintenance plans, which drives your revenue from the contracts to 126,000. Now we roll the year two. So we lose a few, but we gain more. And now we're up to 341,000. And now customer systems from year one start to break and you start winning replacement sales. So you get up to 72 replacement sales. That's 538,000. And we scroll on down through the years, you see the numbers build, but you get to the bottom of year five, you have three, over 3,000 maintenance plan customers generating you over 800,000 a year, and you're gonna do 229 replacement installs in year five, generating 1.7 million in revenue, okay? Your business 
right, is worth $2.5 million. Now, why do I say this is important too for forward-looking revenue, right? If you're trying to retire in a few years, these customers, and why I say monthly too, these 3,000 customers in year five that are buying from you, paying you monthly, there is no dispute that those are your customers, right? They're not someone you did work for in the past, and hopefully I do work for them in the future. They are paying you every single month. You get value for your business in that customer base, right? And then this generation, this, these, these, you can even, some guys have even taken this calculator into the bank. If you're trying to get some loans to expand your business, but get some more trucks, whatever it might be, get some new trucks, whatever you're trying to do, right? You take this, this, this calculator and you show the banker that your business is going to generate this over the years. Here's the trick with banks. Banks want to give you money when you don't need it. When you need money, they don't want to give it to you because they're fearful you're not going to pay them back, right? This allows you to build a base of customers that you're going to be buying from you every month and selling systems to in the future. It gives you that forward-looking revenue, okay? So very impactful to have technology in place so that you can track all of those things in real time and everything else as well and stay on top of them. So the key there is getting into the home, right? You want to be able to track it so you can go and service that home and get in there and that increases all those things. So just driving the top line revenue, I'm sharing this impact at the top here. I don't want to be bragging, but um, contractors using Pays Away, they're growing their business to over 22%. Some are really extreme, right? But the average is around 22.4% as of uh, Friday when I ran the numbers again before the presentation, right? The industry average is about 6% year over year. So the implementation, that's the impact of putting technology into your business, whether it's Payserware or some other software that you want to be looking into. Having a software that works for the entire workflow is key. There are point solutions out there. There's proposal systems, there's scheduled dispatch systems, but they don't talk to each other. That breaks down the communication, right? Having a workflow that moves all the way through your business is what's key. And a lot of these things are cloud-based now, so you can basically work from anywhere too and keep touch on your business. All of these things will really help drive the efficiency in your business, okay? So just a couple of testimonials. Pat, he took on Payserware. He grew 100%. I called Pat and I said, Pat, how'd you grow 100%? I mean, he goes, Doug, I can't tell you how bad it was. <laughs> like, it was bad. They were unorganized. They were running around. Boom, he could see his business finally, right? He's like, the clouds went away and I could see it. And I was able to drive training and do these good things for my company and help my folks out where they needed help. And his business just expanded, right? Another one was Busy Bee. You can see here, they were not super profitable. We actually just talked to them this past week. They've been on Payserware two years now. They told me they were almost going out of business. Now they're opening a second location. So that implementation of the technology is really what helped them grow because they could finally see their business. They saw they were not charging enough. So they raised their prices. They said not one customer complained. And also they're off to their first profitable year. And now looking in two years, they're opening up another location. So having that clarity, right? That's the thing, technology and the tracking of everything just being done for you, letting the computer do the work for you. It tabulates everything. You can see the reports and other things as well and make yourself nice and, nice and easy as you grow. So Ryan, I'll pause there and open up if there's any questions in the chat. We do not have any questions typed in. Okay. Um, hey, um, I have a couple of questions for Payserware. So when they, when you have a dealer that's onboarding with Payserware, they decided that they wanted to, to try this product. Can you tell me a little bit about um, the setup process, the onboarding process, the length of time it takes, um, that sort of thing? Yeah, absolutely. Great question, Talia. So. We have the ability to import um, your current data. We've done it to date from 55 different systems, right? Um, we can do it from QuickBooks online, essentially overnight. We sync up with QuickBooks and pull all your data, your invoices, your payments, your customer information over from that. If you've got QuickBooks desktop or otherwise known as QuickBooks Enterprise, takes about three, four days to bring that data over into the system. And then the, both of those integrations, I always, the, the back office folks ask me this question, does it really work, Doug? <laughs> they work. The integration, the syncing really works well there. But once we get your data in, in the meantime, we're also, you're going to sign up for Payserware. You're going to meet Peyton. You'll meet her first. She'll have a quick conversation with you. Let's just talk for 10 minutes and see if this is a fit. 
should we be going further? Should you be looking into this? What do we think, right? And she'll set you up then with one of our BDR reps and they take you through the hour long demo of the software if you'd like. Some folks will have two, three meetings to sort of bring everyone in their company through it and make sure that it's gonna be a good fit and answer all the questions. Then once you do that, we have a kickoff call. In the kickoff call, we're sort of setting the system up for you. At the same time, your data is being brought over and then you have this, then you start training. And we have, Italia now built in our system, there is a learning center where it has, there's a six minute video on Pazerware, sort of shows you the whole thing. There's a 12 minute one, a little bit more in depth, but then there was a library of minute to minute and a half videos on all the different topics in the software. So if you wanna see schedule dispatch, how do, I, how do I schedule a job? 45 seconds, you can watch the video, you kinda of know how to do it, right? Um, we do, though, also offer live training, if you'd like that, as your method of learning the system, where we have a person, they, they walk you through Zoom, but we walk you through the system and show you how to do things, too. So it's supported with people, if that's the style that you want to go through, or videos that you can watch on your own. And we had uh, the, the fastest one we've ever had done, a fellow signed up on Friday, was on QuickBooks Online. His data was synced in by Friday night. He watched the videos over the weekend and launched himself on Monday. And like we were calling him going, you okay? And he's like, yeah, totally good. Like, he's been fine. But all the information's in the software now as well so that you can, again, we're using technology in our own business to make us more efficient, to make our customers, you, you as contractors, right, um, be more efficient at the onboarding processing and get to using the system as quick as possible. So on average, Tali, to answer your question, it takes about two to three weeks for folks typically to onboard. Um, that's just because people are still, you know, they like that live coach sort of walking through the software. But again, it can be as fast as a couple of days if you were motivated uh, and wanted to do it on your own as well. We've got that capability too. Okay, thank you, Doug. And then my next question is for smaller dealers that only have, you know, maybe two techs and an owner, or maybe the owner is the office person as well. You know, what is your suggestion for them? Is this a good program for someone that's that small? Is it, you know, I, I understand it would make them more efficient, but is the cost of the program going to scare them off or is it going to, to are they gonna see the value in it? Yeah, so cost is definitely something to always consider, right? I'll tell you, it's $3.99 a month for the software, right? And that gives you up to seven users. So that would be $399 for that company that you described. Um, Kent, what's the profit, Rhino? $189? Yeah, $189. $189 for the flat rate system that BusyBee implemented, and that just built their service price book in seconds, right? Does uh, HVAC, plumbing, and electrical. Um, so there's that to consider always, right? But if you think about it, Jim, who I was speaking with at the time, uh, when I made that calculator, he had three technicians, himself and a back office person. Um, and when we talked about the price, right, he said, well, it's kind of like a hundred bucks a week, right? I said, right. And he goes, well, he implemented the proposal tool and sold an, he's like, I'll just sell an extra, you know, uh, accessory or something once a week and I'll pay for the thing, right? So he was thinking that forward looking, how do I pay for this? But if you saw that calculator we put in there, um, if you implement the software, yes, it's $399, but for a smaller company, you're going to grow. You know, you're going to grow $10,000, $20,000 a month in additional revenue if you're using the software. Now, it takes implementation. It takes a little leap of faith, I find, sometimes. When you're a smaller company, you're so busy. You're just so busy right now doing what you're doing because there's a lot, and you're probably losing track of some things. It takes that moment, that switch in your mind to say, I'm going to move over to the software. And I can't say it's instantly, but very quickly you become efficient. You stop missing things. You can have communication, text message out to your customers and things like that. The other thing it does, Talia, is it takes that small company and you can look as professional as the big guy, right? Because this is the stuff that they're implementing, right? At a rapid pace, you can have a proposal that is dynamic and interactive that you just email to the homeowner with nice pictures and other types of things as well with financing integrated into it. You can look just as, just as professional, just as big as the other guy when that homeowner is interacting with you, even though it might be, you know, you in the back office and two of your, you know, two technicians out in the field, you can look big and win those jobs as well and kind of compete on an equal footing. 
Okay, thank you. And then one last question. Um, you do a proposal software within Pazerware, correct? Did I see that? Yes. So how you were talking about QuickBooks and how you upload that, how do you go about getting what equipment the dealer has available and how often do you update that? So we're actually working a, a project and we're going to meet with the folks at ICP corporate in a couple of weeks to import the PIM data, the pictures, the information and materials and stuff, uh, manuals and things from the manufacturer. But at this time, um, what folks do is they'll have a, sometimes they have an Excel price book that we work with them to load. Uh, we can help you with markups and multipliers and margins and those types of things to load it in. But typically that might start with a model number and a cost, right? And then you have to build that in. But it's a little bit of work. If you're starting from scratch, like say you're a smaller company, as you mentioned before, and I've met, I'll just, I won't say the guy's name, but I met them, um, I think it was in uh, yeah, Southern Ohio. And he said to me, so I got to build that price book, right? I said, yeah, where's your pricing today? So it's, that's in dad's head. And I said, okay, so you got to dissect a little bit from dad's head and, um, and put it into an Excel spreadsheet and then we can load it for you. And we have a format we give you. So what this fella did, it took him about five evenings. He said, he goes, I just sat down, I put on a hockey game and I started putting things in. And when you fill out the format, then we can load it for you. And then once it's loaded into the, into the software, it's very easy for folks to edit pricing and other types of things as well in the future. So if you want to build bundles, you know, the good, better, best, you want to build those bundles, you would be picking products from your price book, putting them into the proposal system. And then once you build one proposal, you can favorite it, copy it, make adjustments to it, and now I've got two, right? And so forth and so on. And then I can save, you know, I can save a side-by-side -side comparisons. You can do more than three, but most folks do three or four, but you can do more than that. But, you know, I've seen folks do about three typically. Um, once you build that, you have that built and saved, then your folks in the field can just present that over and over and over again, and you can tweak it with recommendations and other types of things, and then favorite that. So very quickly, you sort of just start using it, and within about a month's time, you've got your 10 favorites done, right? And you've gone through this transition period where now your folks are out selling, your homeowners are looking, they clearly understand what they're buying, right? Um, and you can implement the financing and the other things in that as well. So there's a, there is that transition to the usage of the system. And again, we'll help you all along the way. Just give us a call. We'll tell you how to do it if you, you, know, you want to see it. Or there's videos in the system which show you how to do it. You can watch those and then do it yourself. Great questions, Talia, thank you. All right, thank you. I think we're actually towards the end of our time slot here. So unless there's anything else we need to add, I'm gonna go ahead and shut us down. Great, Ryan, I'm just gonna throw up uh, Peyton's contact information here on one more screen. So if you guys wanna take down her phone number, just shoot her a text if you wanna learn more about Pazerware. Um, this is our site, pazer.com. You could go in there, view a few demo, view up. A free demo and we also have free trials too so you can start with the software now as well but um, if you want to learn more just uh, shoot Peyton a text and uh, she'll get you started but thank you Ryan for the time today and Talia great questions thank you cool thank you Doug thanks everybody appreciate it